Hello world, and welcome everyone to chapter 7 of my Fernblum 6 Lurton Camp Placer. This chapter is for good reasons considered one of the most difficult chapters of this game. As soon as the chapter starts, we are in the middle of an open plaza soon to be swarmed with cavaliers, mercenaries and archers, but most importantly, the first wyvern rider we will face. They pack an incredible durability and attack power, and thanks to their flying ability are able to easily take down your army backline in a few turns, while the frontline struggles to hold choke points around the arena. But that's not all. The chapter is filled with side objectives to complete. Eight villages, all containing very useful items, some chests on the top right of the map containing a rapier and the very useful barrier staff, the first shot at stealth door keys and chest keys, a wyvern holding a red gem that we have to steal, and finally, three new characters to recruit. Let's get most of that in four turns, shall we? The first thing we have to do here is rescue drop Roy next to the position where Zealot and Trike will spawn at the beginning of turn 2, in order to recruit them right away. As we really need the ma added manpower to fulfill all objectives and, well, survive the onslaughts incoming. Lud is going to kill the knight and gets hit on in the process, allowing Sol to have a target to heal as we want him to always do something every round. Shana being the only unit in our party that can fly, as well as being one of our strongest units, is going straight to the boss, while Lance will be holding the left choke point with his javelin. Meanwhile, Melnus, Walt, Lot and Sue will be on village visit duty for the whole map, while Chad will slowly make his way towards his own duty in this map, stealing the red gem. This first enemy phase doesn't have much for us to manipulate outside of hitting a rapier crit to one round the mercenary that will attack Roy, granting him a perfect level of butt luck. We can't run around in anything else this round, and damage doesn't really matter in the end because of the two physics priests that can heal and cheat, uh, any cheat damage we can do here, and anyway we don't really need to kill that many people. On turn 2 we recruit Zealot and Drake. Zealot is basically a second Marcus, but slightly better in pretty much every way, which should be telling enough as to how useful and reliable he will be for us. Can't say the same about Drake, however, as he is only slightly better than base lance, which isn't that great on chapter 7. But hey, he has a horse, so that is going to be plenty for us and what we need for our, from our units at this point. Now that we recruited them, however, we need to bring Roy back to his favorite Pegasi, who will transport him straight to the throne, so Zealot is going to do just that, helped by Wade and Bors. We also need to visit the key shop on this turn, so we burn 179 random numbers to get a 1% crit by Lou to one round the mercenary blocking the way of Lance, and we will be able to buy one fairy tome, seven door keys, and two chest keys. We'll have other ways later on to acquire chest keys, but not so much for door keys, so it's just much better to do it now. Most of those keys ended in our transport Melinus, that way he can easily give a door key and a chest key to Marcus, whose duty is going to acquire the barrier staff. We do need one person to open the door to the treasure room though, and our best candidate for that is Trek, since he can also help out Marcus to get there faster by rescuing him. Shanna will finally burn 28 random numbers to prepare for the next enemy phase, and the rest crew Roy to head for the throne. Most of the enemies we face on this enemy phase only have tw around 20% displayed hit rate on Sol and Lou, thanks to the four styles we place them on, so this isn't such a bad situation to be in as it may look like. We really need Lou to not get hit by the Wyvern still, as it would otherwise change the enemy behavior. Melinus dodging is a little difficult, but not too impossible. We still need Chad to get hit though, so that Sol can have an easy target to heal for next turn. Lou will also have a level up, and he needs just one more magic point, which he can easily get, although he will also get a point in speed in the process. At the end of the enemy phase, Noah will spawn as a green unit from the arena, and will be recruitable with the lot. The objective for turn 3, for the Chocobo team on the left, is killing the scarier unit there, which is the bottom cap in the wider. Zilla will take care of the cavalier with his javelin, while the wyvern will be killed in 3 rounds thanks to the combination of Lu, Bors and Lance, which is just enough damage thanks to Lu's last level up. Sol and Chad go to the other side for both healing and preparing to steal the wyvern still alive on the next turn. Wade is going to help out Magnus access the right side village by killing the soldier on the way, 
getting a level up of strength, skill and luck, which was 8 random numbers away. Meanwhile, Trek dropped Marcus just in range of the chest for next turn, while Shanna drops Roy on the boss and burning 1529 random numbers for the next enemy phase, which is a pretty difficult one since we need to avoid a lot of hits on most of our units to avoid any casualties. We burn more random numbers at once in this playthrough already, but considering the position we are in, we can't burn them as efficiently as we would like, which is why this video goes as fast as 1200% speed at that moment. The ambush bones next to the boss can kill Roy if he gets hit by two scrubs or the boss and one scrub. He also needs to land a crit on the boss with his rapier, which is 10% chance to happen with a 64% displayed hit. Shanna has just enough HP and defense to survive the archer that will attack her, so thankfully we don't have to manipulate for a dodge there. As you probably realize, Trek is just one round of combat away to die, and there is an Elfire mage just on his left who has a 64% chance to hit and kill him. So also needs to dodge yet another 4 rounds of 20-25% to hits that all could hit him. We also need Lot to kill the archer in the bottom left of the map on this enemy phase with his end axe in order to access the villages on next turn. Sue will face her first round of combat, but she won't have any problem dealing with that as she's fast enough to not get doubled. Choke point team will be helped here by Green Unit Noah, who will tank most hits, since he's the only one that doesn't have 1 2 range, enemies will target him over everyone else. The final turn, we have some units that don't have to do anything, so the best thing to do is go to the arena with Lou. We are doing that to get 900 extra gold, for which we needed to burn 292 round numbers, as well as having Lou survive the Meridian he will face was a scary 77% display chance to hit. I still don't know exactly how RNG manip works with the arena. Every time you enter, depending on your class and level, the game will use still possible amounts of numbers, but I haven't been able to figure out what they are used for and why the game uses one over the other. We now need to finish clearing all the objectives. Lance will kill the soldier that is blocking the way so that Shad can steal the red gem, getting the strength and skill level up, which was 82 random numbers away. Zealot will recruit Noah, who is just in range of the Longbow Village. Noah is a solid cavalier with very good stats, including a speed of 9 and 8 strengths, and very solid durability as well. On top of being a cavalier, he starts with very good weapon ranks. Since he has C rank in sword, he can straight away use weapons like the Killing Edge, Warm Slayer, or Light Ram. The three mounted units we recruited are really going to help us go through chapters from now on. Marcus and Trek can finally obtain the Barrier Staff, which we will give to Sol on next chapter. Shanna now needs to get a 2% crit on the boss to kill it, and get an HP, Strength, Skill, and Lot level up, which is 1648 random numbers away. Thankfully, she already hit max speed, so we don't have to care about this stat at, until she promotes. Again, the position we are in made it very long to burn all the Zerans, so the speed this time is of 1060%. Finally, we are going to visit all the remaining villages at once, getting our first killing edge, a physics staff, a hero crest, yet another red gem, an elixir, and the powerful horse slayer. We ended up getting everything but the rapier, which we won't need at this point, so we can seize the throne with Roy, finishing the map in 4 turns. See you next time for chapter 8.